So today we are going to be repasting the Parasite Pool Nerd QX. So a little known fact, this actually comes from Power Mining and they made it custom for Parasite Pool. And they were the first people to send me a Nerd QX, which was the original green one. Today we're going to be repasting it because we haven't cleaned it in a while, as you can see. It is on a stand, so if you kind of see there, it's on a stand. And we need to take that off first, so that's going to be the first step of taking that off. And then the next step is going to be to take off the fans and get a look at the chips underneath. So we have to take the stand off because, as you can kind of see in there, the stand is getting in the way of these nuts and bolts, so we need to take them out as well. So we need to access them to take the whole heatsink off. So we kind of did the same thing with the original Node QX, and that was for the upgrade of the heatsink, but today we're just going to be doing this and repasting it, cleaning the heatsink, cleaning the fans, and then putting it all back together. So first step is to take it off of the stand here, which we'll skip to now. So there we have it. We've taken it off of the stand. It was just the six screws on the back. And that gives us access to the bolts on the bottom. I was thinking maybe I could actually add the stand to the other Node QX because it's actually heavier with the bigger heatsink that it has. So maybe just use this one just standing up as it normally is. But first thing we need to do is unplug the fan here. And once we've unplugged that, we can start to actually take off the heat sink. So it's gonna be on the bottom here. As you can see, see if that's positioned well. As you can see, you've got four points here. One, two, three, four. And I'm hoping that this fits. So let's take it off like this. As I said in a lot of videos that I normally do, I like to just loosen them a little bit and then take everything even further past that just so you don't bend the board because it does have to be at the same tightness to get the correct kind of pressure onto the chip so we're just going to move all of these over to one side and the same with all of these so you want to make sure that you keep all of that because in the previous one that we did, where we were replacing the heatsink, we lost the washers on it. So it was not great because we had to go buy new ones. Obviously that wasn't shown in the video, but they just fell down somewhere and we couldn't find them. So we want to keep all of them to one side. The good thing about recording a video like this is that we can just watch back the video to see where we put it. In terms of if you have a lot of moving parts, you can just play the video and rewind and you can see where you took things off. And then it should just pull off from here. So so as you can see there, just pulled that off and you want to keep these washers as well. So there's four washers kind of on the heat sink that you need to keep as well. And these are actually extremely hard to put back on because you have to line it up and make sure that they don't move out of place whilst you're pushing that down. But you can see there, let's turn it around. I think that this is aluminium. And then we have the chips underneath. It's obviously a little bit thermal paste that got missed out there. And you also have the Parasite Pool logo, Node QX down here, and then what it's made on, so KidCAD. And there's another logo in there, which I can't actually read. So yeah, as I said, this came from Power Mining. I think you can still get 10% off. I still have a 10% code off if you want to get 10% off Power Mining. You can't actually get these. So they were sent out as kind of like a promotional thing for Parasite Pool all in the spirit of, you know, solo Bitcoin mining. And there was other iterations. I believe that there was a bit axe that also was red and a lot more shiny in terms of the PCB. 
I've been wanting to get my hands on one for a while, but I can't find it anywhere. I can't even buy one of them because nobody's really selling them. But if anyone has one of those, they could get in contact. You can just DM me on Twitter and, you know, make an offer. So first thing we're going to do, like with the previous videos, going to take all of the thermal paste off of the heat sink here and then clean up all the thermal paste here. Actually looks like quite a lot of thermal paste, so keep that in mind when we're actually repasting. Normally I just copy how much thermal paste somebody else has put on there. So if there's a lot on here, maybe we do a little bit more for each chip. When it comes down to replacing the thermal paste. Also I did mention in one of the other pasting videos about mentioning in the description of when you're buying these, what actual thermal paste is underneath. I'm assuming it's some sort of standard, you know, thermal paste that you can buy in bulk if you're producing a lot of these miners. And it would just give people an idea of which ones to go for in the future when buying or repasting the thermal paste. So yeah, let's get this cleaned up. Clean up this first and then clean up the chips and we'll come back when both of them are clean. So here we have it. We have the chips cleaned and the heatsink cleaned. So we've done as much as we can. We also cleaned the rest of the board as well. So up here as well as we could. And then I think all we have to do is repaste it from here. Uh, we could choose to actually use the silver one that we got from the other Nerd QX. But right now, I mean, we should focus on this and then we'll make that decision later. So if you can see in there, I'll drag the chips up now. So you can see all four of them. And then the one thing I wanted to point out is that there was thermal paste on this little bit by here. So that is actually some sort of transistor, I guess, that needs thermal paste. And that's what the blob of thermal paste was previously. But we can try get a better look at these chips here and get it to focus. So some of them are different chips. So this is a different kind of look to this one. I don't actually know why that is. Somebody can let me know in the comments why that is. Because that one actually has a different number on it. So a little bit different, just one of them. But the rest of them are fine. So as I said, those are the four that we have zoomed in. I was trying to get a better look on the camera, but this one looks to be slightly different. It's got a barcode on there. So maybe it's from a updated version of the chip models, or maybe it's just where it's manufactured. So I believe that these two are exactly the same. And then these two are different. And obviously that's that little transistor something that needs to have thermal paste on it as well. So now we can hit it with the thermal paste, which we'll show you right now. Again, we're going with the MX6. As I said in the last video, I think we have some for the Nocta thermal paste. I think we got that with a couple of the fans. And we also have some MX4. But somebody did leave a comment saying that certain thermal pastes are for CPUs and not for ASICs. But I haven't really seen much of a difference between all the thermal pastes that I've used. But let's go ahead and put some on here now. So I'm going to try to do this without getting into the shot, but let's see how much. So normally I like to just measure out how much I would normally put on, which is going to be about that much. And then that's onto each chip, like so. And you want to kind of pull away because you don't want that little string bit to come off too much. That's maybe a little too much. So you can always pull it back and push it forward if you want different or if you feel like you've taken it too far. And this one by here. So you see how we're just kind of dragging it across a little bit just to make sure you don't get as much of a stringy part at the end. Oh, that one's gone stringy. And then I guess for the transistor, just dot some thermal paste on there, maybe a little bit more. It looked like it was a little bit more than that. So that looks to be good, I guess. And we'll go with that. That one actually has slightly more on it. That might be a problem, but I think we can go with that. Now the next part is going to be very hard to show you because you kind of have to line up all of the heat sink because what you have is the little washers that you have 
these ones, if you can see them, they basically get placed in here. There's no like set in. So you have to place them all on there, place the node QX on top of there, and then put all of these through backwards. So it's actually very hard to line up. So I won't show you that part because I'll probably spend about half an hour trying to do it and basically touching these into place using like a small screwdriver. And that's pretty much it. I didn't know that there needed to be thermal paste on that. I didn't actually see that on my last one that we did on the other node QX. So I'll take a look and see if that has been normal for the other one and if it actually has any thermal paste on it. So let's put this back on and then we'll get it up and running. We've also cleaned the fan as much as we could. So as you can see there, I actually just dropped one of the things that we actually need and that's gone somewhere. So the fan has been cleaned up as well because we had a bunch of spider webs on it and a bunch of dust in there. So we cleaned it up as best we could. Now let's put it back together. So there we have it all put together apart from the fan, which we can plug in now. So it's this way and like this. So you just push that down in there. That's the fan. Everything else, as you can see with the heat sink, it's got the spaces in there. And the tightness is just kind of not really massively over the top, but just a little twist until it feels like you can't go any further because you don't want to bend the board. That's the main thing that you don't want to do is bend the board and have too much of a grip onto the chips because you're going to end up damaging them at the end of like doing all of this. And the next step is to maybe put this back on, but we're going to just turn it on here live and we'll see if it powers up. So let's plug it in here. And that looks to be good. So it's all starting up, which is always great. And then it takes a while to actually get the hash rate up. So yeah, that's repasting it. I didn't really think there was much need in terms of actually recording what the temperatures were before and after because it always goes up to 60 degrees because we set it to that. But for the most part, that's how you do it. It's kind of a guide on how to do it if you're scared to do it yourself. And we'll probably end up putting the other node QX onto the plate that we got for this one. A lot of people have said that that plate also soaks up a bunch of heat. So that's also good as well because it takes heat out of the actual back of the board. But yeah, it seems to be working fine over here. And we'll just chuck it over to the computer and see what we're getting in terms of the hash rate and efficiencies. So here we are on the dashboard of the Node QX, the Parasite version. Changed a couple of things around. We've gone with a different overclock and it doesn't seem to be actually working as well. One thing that is also not working is the PID. So we set the target temperature as 60 but we only get in, in a sick temperature of 54, which is strange to see. And we don't normally have something like that happen, but potentially something's going on in the background is maybe to do with the overclocks, potentially not being set high enough because we've got them very low and 600 is default. But I thought that they were all gamma chips and the default for gamma is 525. So potentially it's because of this, it's not reaching 60 degrees. But I am going to mess around with it in the background and try get it to actually spin up to around 5 giga hash. Because as you can see there, we did get up to 5 giga hash, again 5 giga hash. But it seems like this one's just not pulling the correct amount. But ASIC temperature is still pretty low. I don't know how the PID works. Maybe we need to update some firmware as well on this because it was quite a while ago before it was quite a while ago that we actually updated all of the firmware but overall it looks to be working fine there isn't really much difference from replacing the thermal based the input voltage slightly high but with both of them i've explained this in a video before one of the node qx's has an 18 gauge the other one has a 16 gauge 
and it makes plugging them both into the same power supply really hard to get the correct voltage. At some point we will get a different wire for the green node QX to give it 16 gauge wire so we get the same input voltage sitting around 12 volts. So we're probably going to just keep this running for a while. It was due time to do a clean of it and replace the thermal paste. I think we have kind of been on a run of doing the thermal paste for different miners. We did the Zyber 8, we did the Avalon Nano, the Bitax Hex, now the Parasite Pool. All we need to do is the other Node QX, which I won't show you because it's the same process. And then I think the last one is going to be the bit axes that we've taken off. So those are going to be easy ones to do as well. And I might not show them either. But if you want to just see a video, I think there's a video on the channel on how to do it. But if you want to see another video of me just talking about how to do it, then let me know in the comments below. Also, let me know what you want to see for future videos. Because we want to keep continue making videos. And we want to keep doing weird upgrades. So hopefully you guys can kind of recommend some things that we could do with all the miners. If you don't know on the channel, we have two node QXs, we have four bit axes, a Zyber 8, a bit ax hex, and a Avalon Nano. So anything to do with them, just recommend them in the comments and we'll see what we can do. Make sure you like this video and subscribe for more content like this.